Time for a spiritual awakening. Time for a spiritual awakening. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Spiritual Awakening 101. My name is Reverend Jerry Yaakov, and I'm your host. Today, we're going to be talking about a journey, a spiritual journey that each of us takes from suffering or fear to love and atonement. This is the uh, Course in Miracles journey that I'll be talking about, but I'm also going to expand it and uh, invite you to be thinking about your personal uh, spiritual path and your journey from suffering to uh, release and atonement and uh, perfect joy and bliss. Uh, th this is the nature of the full awakening, the enlightenment. We no longer suffer. What we experience is joy and happiness in collaboration with our brothers and sisters. It's always a joint effort between our relationships that are healed and our relationship with God, which is sacrosanct. Uh, this is, I think, a, an encapsulated view of what's necessary. Peace with God and peace with all brothers and sisters and with the self. Uh, we don't want to overlook the idea that we have a relationship with our true self. The true self is uh, in and of itself peaceful. But the ego beliefs that we have of separation and of fear encroach on our minds and it's up to us to either accept those thoughts as real or to deny them and turn away from them towards the Holy Spirit, which is perfect love. And perfect love casts out all fear. So that's kind of where we're at. And I've got A Course in Miracles text here that we'll be reading from. Uh, the, the first section I want to go into is entitled Practicing the Holy Spirit. Excuse me, Practicing the Holy Instant. Well, the holy instant is that moment when I give up uh, my isolated egoic thinking that I'm separate from everybody. And I recognize that the truth is that I'm one with everybody and everything. There is no space where God is not. There's no space where my mind in God is not. So there's no separation. I am my neighbor. I am my brother. I am my true self. I am the Christ, I am the Buddha, I am the Tao. Uh, there is no space in between. Uh, it's a, a tapestry, I'll grant you. And that may be a fair metaphor. The tapestry seems to be made up of a variety of colors and textures, but in truth, it makes up one tapestry. And as I identify in the holy instant with the tapestry, and my part in it as a holographic part of the entirety, I know peace, I know joy, I know a, uh, an encounter which is holy, sacred. Well, it says in this section, <clears throat> this course is not beyond immediate learning. And it goes on to say the holy instant is this instant and every instant. So we don't have to be sitting in prayer and meditation in a formal or ritualistic sense. Every moment of interacting with myself and others and with God uh, can be learned quite easily and is a holy instant. Uh, it says you must decide when it is, delay it not. Well, here Jesus is telling us that there's no point in putting off the inevitable curriculum of this course. The curriculum of this course is love the uh, removal of all the obstacles to the experience of love. And we in glad awareness uh, will hold this whole release and release it from the littleness of the ego. Our thinking, our thoughts, our beliefs, our mind is then trained and disciplined to avoid the littleness of gossip, of separation thoughts, of specialness, I'm better than somebody else. Somebody else is more sinful than I am. Uh, I have special favor with God. Those are all egoic thoughts that are useless and, of course, are unreal because nothing that God uh, has not created is real. Only what God creates is real, and God creates only loving thoughts, not thoughts of specialness, 
an ego uh, separation. It says your practice must therefore rest upon your willingness to let all the littleness go. Let the ego thoughts of separation and separateness go. Well, this is perfect because littleness uh, is what has been causing our suffering. We've suffered because we've thought of ourselves as guilty, sinful, little. Uh, there's a reference, I think, in the Bible uh, to being as the dirt, uh, being as the snake, being uh, condemned by God. All of this is uh, blather. This is egoic blather. It's not true. The only thing that's true is our uh, sacredness, our divinity, our oneness in God and in the Christ. That's who we are. We're sacred. We're perfect. Whole and complete. And we give up the littleness thoughts. I'm not little. I'm not powerless. I'm not unmanageable in life and in love. My life is quite manageable. This course is quite simple to learn. All I have to do is think with the Holy Spirit. Remember, the Holy Spirit is in my mind. It takes up the entirety of my mind. The Holy Spirit is everything in my mind and then in everything that I see and perceive. The ego is a false ideation. It is basically an illusion. It is a delusional thought system, defense mechanisms that are made up to protect me against that which really doesn't exist. There's nothing in the universe that uh, marks me as a victim. There's no universe out to get me or to punish me for my inherency of sinfulness. This isn't true. My inherency is that of spirit, of Christ, of love. Let's go on a little bit further here. It says, think you that you can find salvation in your own way and have it? Give over every plan that you have made for your salvation in exchange for God's. He will content you and nothing else can bring you peace. For peace is of God and no one else beside him. So the ego wants to encroach on God's uh, monopoly, if you will, on uh, the atonement and salvation. But only God's plan for salvation will work. The ego's plan is really anti-salvation, anti-atonement, anti-redemption. It uh, trades in our guilt and our sin. It says if you sacrifice in the name of your sinfulness and guilt, then God may have mercy on you. Then possibly you'll find favor and you'll be relieved of your suffering. But this is based on a false premise that we're sinful and guilty and that we've separated from God. That's impossible. We cannot separate from our Creator. The Creator and we are one. God created us in its likeness and image, and it shall forever be that way. We are imbued with the life and the intelligence and the power of God forever eternally. And nothing that the ego suggests can ever be accomplished vis-a-vis -vis separation, uh, taking over the job of salvation. I can't do that. But with God as me and, and my mind in God's great mind, that, of course, is already accomplished. Well, it says, be humble before him and yet great in him. I love this powerful statement, be humble. The ego, of course, is grandiose. So we want to be humble. And yet we're great, the grandeur of Christ in us, as us, the Holy Spirit, the Shekinah, the light, is us, and we are so great in grandeur. But that means everybody else is too. We're not special, uh, and that eliminates others as being special. Everybody's made in the likeness and image of God, and it is our minds that it is host to God. Well, this is gonna be wrapping up our first segment. Uh, I'll do three segments in this uh, episode. But they're all going to be concentrating on the plan that God has for salvation for us and our journey from the ego to the Holy Spirit and from fear to love. 
which is really the nature of a miracle. Well, welcome back to our next uh, part two of this episode, uh, the journey from fear to love. And uh, we're talking about how the ego is a, um, a thought system that tries to undo atonement and redemption and salvation. It, it's, it secretly tries to assure us that its plan will work and that we will find atonement and enlightenment. But its secret plan is to undo it and to punish us and finally to place us in the throes of uh, death because God is eternal life. So ego has to stand for uh, impermanence and death itself, which is not true. Well, it says here in the section that we're reading, uh, practicing the holy instant in the text, that you have been willing to meet the conditions <clears throat> if you're aligning with the Holy Spirit. And you can claim the holy instant anytime and anywhere you want it. In your practice, try to give over every plan that you've accepted for your practice. Give over every plan uh, of finding magnitude and littleness in your ego. It is not there. So Jesus is telling us directly what we've been just talking about. The ego has a secret plan uh, to undo uh, our enlightenment and our peacefulness and our joy. We don't want to buy into that uh, secret covert idea of undoing that which God has created forever. So Jesus is saying there's no plan for atonement and enlightenment uh, in the ego thought system. Use the holy instant only to recognize that you alone cannot know where it is and only can conceive and deceive yourself. Uh, and how often have we deceived ourselves? Said, well, this time it's going to be different. I'm going to do what I've been doing all along, but of course it'll be different and the outcome will be favorable. Well, that's, that's, you know, a well-known definition, I think, of insanity. So it says, make the holy instant yours at once. This is what Jesus is calling us to do. And, and go from a release from the littleness in the mind of the ego to being host to the grandeur of God and the Holy Spirit. And this depends on willingness, not on time. We simply don't age and become wise and accept the atonement comes from willingness, a decision that we make in our minds. This is up to us. This is not up to time, which is basically an illusion in itself. Time accomplishes nothing. But willingness within our minds can accomplish miracles. It says the reason this course is simple is that the truth is simple. Complexity is of the ego. Confusion is of the ego. Split mind, confusion, complexity, the secret idea of undoing our peace and serenity, uh, under uh, cutting God's plan for salvation. That's what the ego is up to. Now, why would we in any sense want to embrace something like that? Well, the only reason that I'm aware of is that we thought that the ego, in its uh, separate ideas from God, would give us a special relationship with God, one of equality in a, in a uh, unhealthy sense. It would put us in a powerful position of creation. We'll come up with our own plan of salvation, just like God's plan, only ours will be uh, egoic. It'll be mine. It'll be my grandiose plan for riches and fame and specialness and authority and we found over and over and over through lifetime after lifetime that that kind of grandiosity and ego plan for salvation <clears throat> really is the opposite of God's plan and is the reason that we suffer. We had to make a decision to separate in our minds from God. And this is called the tiny mad idea uh, in A Course of Miracles. But of course, that tiny mad idea place this in a position of delusion. You can't separate from that which you are. We are godlings. We are angelic. We are divine. We are God's grace in action. 
we are an expression of God's holiness, God's uh, omniscience. And you can't separate or put asunder that which God created. And God's will is our will. There's no other will but God's. And so let's align with that rather than align, aligning with separate self-will driven ideations that really can only get us into uh, fearful situations in our minds and, and cloud up and, and darken uh, the world that we perceive and relationships that we experience. We don't want the littleness and the darkness. We want the light and the connectivity and the oneness. That's what Jesus meant when he said he'd overcome the world. Basically, the world is an ego construct. It's a world of separation of bodies and minds that say things separately, have opinions, make other people wrong, make ourselves right. Well, this is, this is not a helpful plan. So it says here, uh, the complexity of the ego and the ego's attempts obscure the obvious. And that's the love binds all of us to God and to each other. The holy instant, which is a journey in love and mind, is a time in which you receive and give perfect communication. Well, communication here, I think, is equated with the idea uh, of joining in minds. We, we as spirits communicate instantly, and the thoughts that we instantly exchange are ones of connectivity and love, ones of holiness worthiness and that our minds are open both to receive and to give and it's the recognition that all minds are in communion or communication that gives us the opportunity to uh, experience the atonement right here right now in the holy instant it therefore seeks to change nothing but merely to accept everything well, doesn't the Holy Spirit accept everything? Because everything is good. Everything is holy. Everything is one with, uh, with God. And there's only that. So we can accept it. There's nothing to change. There's nothing to usurp from God and remold in our own likeness and image as form or bodies as the in, uh, impermanent. We want to stick with the content that God has created. God created forever and eternal. Well, here's a wonderful statement. It says, um, <clears throat> and, and then you wonder why it is that you're not in full communion and communication with all those around you and with God who surrounds all of you together. Well, why are you so lonely? Why are you so, uh, you know, filled with isolation and suffering uh, and fear? Because we've avoided God's will. And God's will is one of full communication and of connectivity, of joining, transcending the tiny man idea of separation, both from God and from each other. So every thought that you would keep hidden, every thought of separation, shuts communication off. And ask yourself, would I want to be perfect communication? And am I wholly willing to let everything that interferes with perfect communication, let it go? This is what we're planning. This is the, the, the game plan, if you will, of A Course in Miracles. What we're going to do is we're going to let, let go of all the blocks, the obscurations to the awareness of love's presence. Once we do that, then what comes through is the light and the love. Well, again, we're, we're coming to the close of the second segment here of this episode. But it says, for the holy instant is given and received with equal willingness, being the acceptance of a single will that governs all thought. That is God itself. God is our will. God is our strength. We are supported and sustained by the love of God. Keep this in mind, and we have met the necessary condition that the holy instant does not require that you have no thoughts uh, that are not pure. It just requires that you have no thoughts of impurity that you would keep, that you would not let go of. Innocence is not of your making. It is given you the instant you would have it 
atonement would not be if there were no need for it. Well, welcome back to our third and final segment. We're reading from Practicing the Holy Instant, chapter 15, <clears throat> in the uh, Course of Miracles. And we're talking about uh, the journey from fear to love, the journey from time to timelessness, the journey from suffering to happiness and full communication between all of our brothers and sisters and communion with God itself. Listen to this paragraph. The necessary condition for the holy instant, which is that moment of recognizing we are uh, eternally joined with God and each other. The necessary condition doesn't require that you have no thoughts that are impure, only that you are willing to let go of those impure thoughts. So in your practice, try only to be vigilant against deception of the ego. When you have thoughts of fear, of special egoness, uh, of grandiosity, of being right and other people wrong, of your being unfairly treated, grievances of any kind, um, seek not to protect your thoughts, those thoughts, because uh, you would be keeping yourself from the atonement which God has planned for us. Let the Holy Spirit's purity shine them away and bring all your awareness to the readiness for purity he offers you. And we are ready for, for purity and for awakening. You know, we're only in a dream of ego. Dreams are not real. The ego is not real. We've placed our beliefs in it. And you do perceive and experience what you believe is real. So change your belief as to what's real. God is real. God's plan for atonement is real. The holy instant, which is available at any time in our minds, connecting us with all our spirit brothers and sisters, is real. That's not a dream. In fact, those uh, constitute the stepping stones for, our, for an awakening from the dreaming of the ego. Well, it goes on to say, thus, God will make you ready to acknowledge that you are host to God and hostage to no one and to nothing. And in particular, we're not hostage to the ego. So this is the, uh, the end of this particular section, practicing the holy instant. Uh, <clears throat> we wanna go on and briefly make reference to the holy instant and special relationships. Special relationships are ego bound. Uh, they, they mean that I'm in it to take something from other people. Subconsciously, in my ego thoughts, I'm lacking, I'm impure, I'm sinful and guilty. But I see in certain people an ability to take from them their purity. This is all uh, imagined, of course, in the dream. And these are all figures in the dream. I represent in some way the insufficiency uh, of the ego uh, figure. And then somebody else is the idealized sense of the uh, spiritual figure. Or it can be reversed uh, in, a, in an ego dream. I can be the idealized sense of uh, the Christ. And everyone else is the, um, the sinful version, the victimizer, the ego. And I want to avoid them. And I want to do battle with them because I don't trust them. Either way, you have a separation in thinking. I'm special and they're not, or they're special and I'm not. Either way, the ego is having a field day in uh, playing with the idea of separation, both from each other, brothers and sisters, and from God itself. Because as we think of each other, uh, we'll also be thinking of how we relate to God. Are we one with God or are we separate from God? Let's uh, simply put in context what the holy instant and special relationships uh, are in A Course in Miracles. The holy instant undoes special relationships. When I align with God in my thinking, with the Christ, with the Holy Spirit, I don't think of special relationships anymore. The Holy Spirit knows no one is special, yet he also perceives that you have made special relationships, which he would purify and not let you destroy. However unholy the reason you made them may be, he can translate them 
into holiness by removing as much fear as you will let him. You can place any relationship under his care and be sure that it will not result in pain if you offer him your willingness to have it serve no need but his. All the guilt in it arises from your use of it, all the love from his. Well, I want to focus on this. Love is of the Holy Spirit. And we can tap into that at any moment and transform special ego relationships, which are all about taking and violating other people and treating them as objects and making it a, a holy relationship where there's a oneness, uh, a dualism, excuse me, a non-dualistic uh, expression of God in each of us. That's the miracle. That's the love. We're not special. We're all worthy. We're all the same. And that's the beauty of it. Everyone has inherent within us the ability to express the Christ and the light, express the Christ and the love. That's who we are. The Shekhinah and the light and the holiness of the Buddha. We can become that. We can express it and be the eyes and the ears, the hands and the feet of the Holy One while we're dreaming a dream of earthliness. That's fine. We can use the body to express that. That's a good purpose for the body, not to identify as the body, but to use the body uh, in furtherance of extending God's love into holy relationships and undoing the idea of specialness. You know, there's so many uh, institutional uh, ideas in the world that undergird specialness, special country clubs, special uh, economic brackets, the top 1%. Uh, special uh, privileges to certain ethnic groups. If you're white, you're right. Uh, special cultures that, that uh, deem themselves uh, above others. Uh, special societies that are high societies, caste systems. All of this is specialness and it's of the ego. And, it, and all of it keeps us in suffering, keeps us in fear. What if you lose your specialness? Whereas you can't lose what God has given you. And that's the holiness that everybody shares. So when there is this all-inclusiveness, this um, acceptance that we're spirit, not bodies, not cultures, not clubs, uh, not associations separate from others, not a we versus them, but a we in an inclusive sense, we are this expression of God. And God is love. And we're all love. That's what we have to point out. And that's what we have to remember. And when we do, we've made our journey from fear to love, from time to timelessness, from the unawakened to the awakened, and the, uh, the, the, uh, the permanent, the eternal. The soul has made its journey successfully. In every moment, of the expression of God itself and God's will. Well, thank you for joining us. I believe those are the three segments we wanted to cover today. Uh, thank you, namaste, shalom, and peace. And we'll see you next time.